Today we're going to go over areas of regular polygons. So you do need to remember what a regular polygon in is. It's any sided object, so all the way up from a triangle up to a nonagon and above, um, that have all equal sides and all equal angles. So an equilateral triangle is a regular polygon because it's all equal sides. A square is a regular polygon. No other quadrilateral would be a regular polygon. It has to be a square. All right, so whenever we find the area of a regular polygon, we need to know what the apothem is. So on any regular polygon, it's always from the midpoint of a side to the center of that polygon. So this right here is my apothem. Um, it's always from the midpoint. It doesn't have to be on that side. It can be on any of these sides. All of these would be apothems. You only need one, um, but it's always from the midpoint to the center every time. Um, and it's also always perpendicular. So that's what this means. It will always be at a 90 degree angle. So to find the area of a regular polygon, you have take half the apothem. So remember that this is A times P, and P is the perimeter. Okay, um, sometimes you might also need to know what this angle is to figure it out. So first of all, you need to know um, what a central angle is. And the central angle is this entire angle right here. It always goes from the center to and it has two radii to two vertices, and it's that part right there is the central angle. You always figure out what that angle measure is by doing 360 divided by the amount of sides every time. Now, we don't need to know the central angle to find the apothem, and yes, you're going to have to use trig, um, but what we need is this, and that is half of the central angle. So to find the apothem, Sometimes you have to do central angle divided by 2. So you're going to need to figure out whatever that central angle is and then divide it by 2. In order to do this problem, we need to know what our central angle is first. So to find that, you do 360 divided by the amount of sides, and that will give me 45 degrees for my central angle. But my central angle is this whole thing. I don't need that whole thing. I just need half of it. So for this one, you would do 45 divided by 2, which gives you 22 and a half. And we're trying to find this apothem because we need, if you look, the apothem and the perimeter. We have enough information to find the perimeter now because we know all the sides are 10. But we do not know what the apothem is. So that's our goal. That's what we're trying to do. And we're going to have to do trig in order to do that. So across from my angle... This side is, the whole thing is 10, which means what I'm going to use for my tiny triangle is just 5. And this 5 is opposite, and then my adjacent, my apothem is my adjacent. So I'm going to use the tangent, actually let me move that over a little, well, tangent of 22 and a half is equal to opposite, which is 5 over adjacent. And if you remember back when I taught you trig, I told you that the trick for this is just to flip-flop these. So now the tangent of 22 and a half will be in the denominator, and 5 just stays there. So 5 divided by the tangent of 22 and a half would be 12.1, about. But remember that's um, a rounded number. So I don't want to do my final calculations that way. I want to go back and use the original very long number. My perimeter, we have sides that are 10 inches long. We have 8 of them, which means that our perimeter is 80. So our area is going to be half the perimeter, which is 80, times the apothem, which is about 12.1. Um, but in my calculator, I'm just going to press times 80 times a half um, from that original answer to make sure that I get the least amount of rounding possible. So this gives me 482.8 
inches squared. All right, on the next one, we're given a hexagon. So let's figure out what its central angle is. 360 divided by 6 is 60. But remember, we don't need to know the central angle because that's that. We just need to know what this angle is. So we'll do 60 divided by 2, which is 30, meaning that this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So to go from the longer side to this little shorter side, you would divide by the square root of 3, which means that this piece here would be 5, which means that the entire thing would be 10. So we know our apothem because it's right here. We need our perimeter, which there are six sides in a hexagon, and each side are 10 long, so our perimeter is 60. Our area will be half of 60 times our apothem, which is five square roots of three. So in your calculator, 0.5 times 60 times five, do not do the square root of three. That gives me 150 square roots of three centimeters squared. That is the unrounded version. Now, you could figure out the whole one and just multiply times the square root of 3. Um, and that would give you about 259.8 centimeters squared. Um, but again, remember, sometimes we'll ask for the exact answer and sometimes we'll ask for the rounded answer. Find the area of a regular pentagon RSTUV if its perimeter is 60 centimeters. So a pentagon looks like this. We know that its sides are, um, well, its perimeter is 60. So if perimeter is 60, then a side would be 60 divided by 5, because we've got five sides in a pentagon. And that would give us 12 for each side, 12 what centimeters. But we need to figure out what our apothem is. We don't know. So let's figure out our central angle. 360 divided by 5 is 72. But remember, that's our whole angle. So in order to find this one, we need 72 divided by 2, which is 36 degrees. We know that this piece is 6 because that's half of 12. And it's a tangent problem again because they will almost always be. So tangent of 36 is equal to opposite over adjacent. So 6 over A. Flip flop these two. A is equal to the tangent of 36 with the 6 on top. So 6 divided by the tangent of 36 is 8.3, about 8.3. <clears throat> Remember, we still don't want to use the abbreviate, uh, the abbreviated, the rounded apothem. We want to try to use the whole number so that we round at the very, very end. So I'm going to do times 60 times 0.5. So it grabs that previous answer. And this tells me that my answer is 247. Point seven and centimeters squared. Remember on Schoology, you would have to write out square centimeters. And um, it'll show you that in on your test as well. So these are not regular polygons. We threw in some, some more composite figures. So this one is made up of two trapezoids um, that are congruent. So in order to figure out the height of the trapezoid, because remember trapezoids formula is half the two bases added together times the height. Well, we know what the two bases are for both of them, right? 
Um, but we don't know what the height is, which is this distance, like from here to here at the 90 degree and here to here at the 90 degree. Any point along that time, they will both have the same height, though. And because the whole thing is 64, you just split it in half. So our height is 64 divided by 2, which is 32. So whenever we find out our area, um, we're going to do the area of one trapezoid. You do one half times both bases added together, so 20 plus 40 times the height, which is 32. So one half of 60 times 32, which means it's basically 30 times 32, which is 960. That's only one trapezoid. So we need to find, um, we need to add them both together, which is 1,920 square meters. All right, this one are parallelograms or uh, rhombus or um, you could name it multiple different ways. We're going to call this one a parallelogram because in order to use a rhombus, we need the diagonals. And I don't want to find the diagonals. So um, we're going to use the parallelogram, which means base times height. But we still need to know what this height is of both of them. So we're just going to split this in half because these are congruent um, parallelograms. So our heights are, or I guess, yeah, it's heights. Heights are 40 divided by 2, which means each height is 20. So the area of just one of them is going to be base times height, so 24 times 20, which is 480. So the area of the whole thing is 480 plus 480, or just 480 times 2, which ends up being 960 inches squared. And we're done with these notes.